Hi, in this video, we are going to continue our series on vectors and 3D geometry. So I have covered everything that we needed to do about vectors. And now I'll start the topic for 3D geometry. So the first thing that we want to understand here is the idea of direction cosines. So what are direction cosines? So if you have a line OP in three dimensional space where O is the origin, the origin and P is the end point, P is a point in space and line OP makes angles alpha, beta, and gamma with the positive directions of the x, y, and z axis. With the positive directions of x, y, and z axes. Then cos alpha, cos beta, and cos gamma are called the direction cosines of OP are called the direction cosines of line OP. So what is the meaning of this definition? So if you have a 3D space like this, let's say this is X, this is Y, this is Z, and these are the positive directions of X, Y, and Z, and I have some point somewhere in space P, and this is my origin. So this line makes some angles. It could be in 3D space. So you have to visualize it like that. It is somewhere here in 3D space, right? So this line makes some angles with all the three axes, right? So you can say that it makes a certain angle with the Y axis. It makes a certain angle with the X axis and it makes a certain angle with the z axis, right? How do we find these angles? You have to make a plane containing the line and the axis that you are talking about. And in that plane, you have to figure out the angle. So whenever you have a line and an axis, there will be a plane that passes through both of these, right? And in that plane, what is the angle between them, right? That is the alpha, beta, or gamma. So cos alpha, cos beta, cos gamma becomes your direction cosines. And usually we give them symbols L is equal to cos alpha, M is equal to cos beta, and N is equal to cos gamma. Right? These are your direction cosines. And now you will be able to prove by Pythagoras theorem that L square plus M square plus N square is always equal to one. So the next thing that we want to talk about here is if L, M, N are direction cosines of a line, then L square plus M square plus N square is equal to one. How do you think about it? So again, it's a little difficult to visualize, but it's not actually something very complicated. So suppose this is the point, you drop a perpendicular, this is the projection of that in the, uh, if this is Z in the ZX plane. So what we are saying is, L M N L square plus N square plus N square is one because you can write if this point is X, Y, Z and this distance is R, the cos of, for example, cos alpha, where L was the direction cosine with the X axis would be X by R. Cos beta would be Y by R and cos gamma would be Z by R. Because you can make right angle triangles with each of the axis lines. So here, if you drop a perpendicular like this, this height is technically your Y. 
right? This height is y and this is r, correct? And this is a perpendicular. So in this right angle triangle, y by r will be your cos beta. Why? Because we have to find the angle that it makes with this axis. So that is this angle beta. So this angle is going to be pi by 2 minus beta. And you can see clearly that sine of pi by 2 minus beta is perpendicular by hypotenuse is y by r, right? And sine of pi minus 2 minus beta is simply cos beta, right? So similarly, you can do the other things also. And because we know that the r is root over x square plus y square plus z square, it is obvious now this r was the distance of the point from the origin O. So it is obvious from here that cos square alpha will be x square by r square plus y square by r square plus z square by r square. It will become 1. <coughs> so that is how you understand how this comes. Right? Now, once we understand this, we should also be able to say that because cos square alpha plus cos square beta plus cos square gamma is 1, you can also easily prove that sine square alpha plus sine square beta plus sine square gamma will be 2. All you have to do is take 1 minus sine square alpha is equal to cos square alpha, right? Okay, so if you have understood the direction cosines, then we can move to the idea of direction ratios. What are direction ratios? So let L M N, let L M N be the direction cosines of a line and A B C be three numbers associated with the line such that associated with the line such that L by A is equal to M by B is equal to N by C and is equal to some constant K, then basically we are saying that A, B, C are proportional to L, M, N. Proportional to L, M, N. And these three numbers are called direction ratios. When this L, M, N was direction cosines. Right? So when you have direction ratios, then they will not satisfy the condition L square plus M square plus N square is equal to 1. It is not necessary that direction ratios will satisfy this condition because you can have something like this that A is equal to some lambda times L, B is equal to some lambda times M and C is equal to some lambda times N. Because A, B, C are proportional to L, M, N, right? So lambda doesn't have to be equal to 1. Therefore, you will not always get the condition that A square plus B square plus C square is 1. So you have to bear in mind the difference between direction ratios and direction cosines. Direction cosine squares will always add to 1. Direction ratios are three numbers that are just proportional to the direction cosines, right? Okay. Then... If somebody gives you the direction ratios, from there you should be able to find direction cosines very easily. So for example, if A, B, C are the direction ratios of a line, then the direction cosines, then the direction cosines of the line will be plus or minus a by root over a square plus b square plus c square comma b by root over a square plus b square plus c square and c by root over a square plus b square plus c square. So if you divide 
A, B, C, each of them by the mod, uh, square root of A square plus B square plus C square, you will get the direction cosines. So how do we know this? So let's say, let L, M, N be the required direction cosines. Direction cosines. Then obviously we know that A is to B is to C is equal to L is to M is to N. That is the definition of direction ratio. So if ABC are direction ratios, this has to be true. So we know that A by L is equal to B by M is equal to C by N is equal to some K, some constant. So A is equal to KL, B is equal to KM and C is equal to KN. <clears throat> and now we can find this constant K because we know that L square plus M square plus N square is always supposed to be one. We can say that A square by K square plus B square by K square plus C square by K square is always one. And from here you can say that K square is equal to one by A square plus B square plus C square. And therefore K will be plus or minus one by root over A square plus B square plus C square. And now since you have gotten this as the K, the direction ratio cosines will be A by K, B by K and C by K. And from there, we get this expression for direction cosines, right? So keep this in mind. This is very important because sometimes in problems, you will be given direction ratios, not cosines. The next thing that I want to talk about here is the direction ratios direction ratios of the line segment of the line joining the points A which is x1, y1, z1 and B which is x2, y2, z2. So if you know two points on a line Technically, you know the direction in which the line is being made, right? So we should be able to figure out the direction ratios of that line segment. So what we will say here is simple. Let's say this is z-axis, this is x-axis, this is y-axis. And you have one point A here and one point B here. And A is x1, y1, z1. And B is x2, y2, z2. So now the line segment AB, if you extend this line segment, it will cut the positive, it will cut the x-axis somewhere here. And this angle should be your alpha because this line segment, this is the positive direction of the x-axis. So angle between positive direction of x-axis and the line segment is my alpha, right? So if I want to find out alpha, all I have to do this is parallel to this, so this angle is also alpha. So I have to find alpha in this right angle triangle, right? Or cos alpha in this right angle triangle. Now, if you notice the base, the difference between the base is x2 minus x1. We can see that x2 is the x coordinate of B, x1 is the x coordinate of A. So x2 minus x1 is this base, and r is this distance between A and B, right? So we can figure out that cos alpha will obviously be x2 minus x1 by r, right? Similarly, you can prove that cos beta would be y2 minus y1 by r and cos gamma would be z2 minus z1 by r, right? And these are your L, M and N for the line segment AB, right? So if these are the direction cosines of line AB, then direction ratios can be given a simple form. We can multiply all of the direction cosines with the R, which is the distance between the two points. And we can get three numbers, X2 minus X1, Y2 minus Y1, and Z2 minus Z1, which represent numbers that are proportional to the direction cosines and therefore these are the direction ratios of this line segment right so remember this that the 
direction ratios of a line joining two points is very simple. You just take the difference of the coordinates. x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1, and z2 minus z1 will become your direction ratios. Okay. Now, the next thing that we want to talk about here. Uh, okay, before I discuss this, I will also tell you an uh, algebraic identity that sometimes becomes useful in problems involving direction, cosines, and ratios. This is Lagrange's identity. And if you have, it says A1, B1, C1, and A2, B2, C2 are two pair, are two triads of real numbers, or two triplets, A1, B1, C1, and A2, B2, C2. You can always show that a1 square plus b1 square plus c1 square multiplied by a2 square plus b2 square plus c2 square minus a1 a2 plus b1 b2 plus c1 c2 whole square. The identity says that this quantity will be equal to a1 b2 minus a2 b1 whole square plus b1 c2 minus b2 c1 whole square plus c1 a2 minus c2 a1 whole square. So think about this. <coughs> this. This identity can be easily proved using vectors. You should imagine this as if this was a vector a, this is like mod a square mod b square minus a dot b. whole square is equal to cross product of a cross b whole square. So this is the vector meaning of this. If you think of this as a vector and this as b vector, you should be able to prove this easily. Because a dot b is mod a mod b cos theta and this is mod a mod b square. So when you subtract that, you will get mod a mod b square common 1 minus cos square theta, which will be sine square theta. And mod a mod b sine theta is a cross b modulus. So therefore, it is going to be the square of the modulus of a cross b here on the right side. So this identity, keep in mind, when we do some problems on 3D geometry, you will find that sometimes you need to use it. So that's why I'm mentioning it right now. However, now we will continue with our basic theory. <laughs> this is angle between two lines. Angle between two lines whose direction cosines are given. Whose direction cosines are given. And let's say the direction cosine of line 1 are L1, M1, N1. And for line 2, they are L2, M2, n2 right so then theta the acute angle between the two lines is given by cos theta is equal to the dot product of these two so l1 l2 Think of these as vectors in the directions of the line because that is the meaning of direction cosines. Direction cosine gives you a unit vector in the direction of the line. So if this is line L1, unit vector, and if this is line L2, unit vector, right? These are the direction cosine generated unit vectors. So the angle between them will simply come if you do cos theta and divide by the modulus of the vectors, right? But modulus of the vectors are 1 and 1 because these are unit vectors. So cos theta will give us the angle and theta is the acute angle between these two lines. And cos theta comes out to be L1, L2 plus M1, M2 plus N1, N2. Right? So here what we are saying is... The line L1's direction is given by 
L1 I cap plus M1 J cap plus N1 K cap and the line 2's direction is given by L2 I cap plus M2 J cap plus N2 K cap. And if you do dot product of these two vectors, you will get the cosine of the angle between them, right? Now, there is another way to prove this also. Uh, we can do it without doing vectors. For example, let's think about it. So let's say there is one line PQ. And let's say there is another line RS. Right? And PQ line has direction cosine L1, M1, N1. And this line has direction cosine L2, M2, N2. Right? And let's say theta is the angle between them. So now consider two points A and B which are at unit distance from the origin. So what I mean to say is there are two points A and B. The distance of both the points is one from the origin. Let's say origin is somewhere here. One and one unit from the origin, right? And we have to get the points in such a way that angle AOB is equal to theta, where theta was also the angle between these lines. So what we are saying is that OA should be parallel to PQ, OB should be parallel to RS, and theta is the same angle, is the angle between PQ and RS and is equal to angle BOA, right? We are constructing a similar situation involving this right, this triangle OAB. We have made OB and OA parallel to the two lines, right? So now A, if you think about it, this is one unit length. So the coordinates of A should be L1, M1, N1, and the coordinates of B should be L2, M2, N2. Why? Because these are unit vectors in the directions of the line. So the direction cosines of the line should give us the points of A and B, right? So OA was parallel to PQ and PQ had direction cosine L1, M1, N1. And since you went only one unit in that direction, one R cos theta should be your points coordinate. But cos theta is L1. So R is 1. So it is going to be L1, M1, N1. Right? And now by cosine rule, we can easily find the angle between them. Cos theta should be equal to 1 plus 1 minus the distance AB square, which is going to be L2 minus L1 square minus M2 minus M1 square minus N2 minus N1 square divided by 2 into 1 into 1, right? So from here, you can see here that we get something like 2 minus L1 square plus m1 squared plus n1 squared minus l2 squared plus m2 squared plus n2 squared. And then you get a plus 2 l1 l2 plus 2 m1 m2 plus 2 n1 n2. The whole thing is divided by 2. And this, are, this is 1, this is 1. So this cancels this. 2 gets cancelled. And when you divide by 2, you will get l1 l2 plus m1 m2 plus n1 n2. So this is technically the same as the vector proof, but I just wanted to show you this. The next thing that I want to talk about is if theta is the angle between two lines with direction cosines L1, M1, N1 and 
एफ टू एम टू एन टू वी ऑलरेडी नो दैट कॉस थीटा विल बी इक्वल टू मॉड ऑफ एल वन एल टू प्लस एम वन एम टू प्लस एन वन एन टू राइट सो इफ आई वॉन्ट टू टॉक अबाउट कॉस थीटा एज अ पॉजिटिव वैल्यू और यू वॉन्ट टू फाइंड आउट द एक्यूट एंगल बिटवीन दीज टू लाइन्स वी ऑलरेडी नो दिस so sin theta what will sin theta be equal to so sin theta will be should be 1 minus cos square theta so if we simplify this and try to find out root over 1 minus l1 l2 plus m1 m2 plus n1 n2 square what you will get is you can use now lagrange's identity because one can be written as l1 square plus l2 square plus l3 square and no l1 square plus m1 square plus n1 square times l2 square plus m2 square plus n2 square and then subtract this <laughs> right so technically instead of one i have written this and now this is fitting the form of lagrange's identity so it would be inside it would be l1 m2 minus l2 m1 whole square plus m1 n2 minus m2 m1 whole square plus l2 n1 minus l1 n2 whole square and that will be my sin theta and basically this is the root of the cross product magnitude of the cross product of the two vectors l1 m1 n1 and l2 m2 n2 right so remember this now if the two lines have to be perpendicular if the two lines are perpendicular then obviously cos theta should be zero so you should have l1 l2 plus m1 m2 plus n1 n2 should be zero right that is the condition for two lines to be perpendicular and if the two lines have to be parallel if the two lines have to be parallel you should realize that in that case parallel lines you should have sin theta is equal to zero and notice that since sin theta is coming out to be this for it to be zero each of the three squares should be zero and if the squares are zero we can easily show that the ratio of l1 by l2 is equal to m1 by m2 so you would have this relation l1 by l2 is equal to m1 by m2 is equal to n1 by n2 so the direction cosines have to be proportional for the lines to be parallel right so that is something that you need to keep in mind the direction cosines have to be proportional for the lines to be parallel and if the lines are perpendicular then l1 l2 plus m1 m2 plus n1 n2 should be zero right now a simple extension of this idea is basically if you have direction ratios instead of direction cosines so if the direction ratios of two lines are a1 b1 c1 and a2 b2 c2 a2 b2 c2 and you have theta is the angle between them angle between them then you can say that the cos theta should be technically it's supposed to be l1 l2 plus m1 m2 plus n1 n2 right where those are the direction cosines not the direction ratios but we can figure out the direction cosines from here if the direction ratios is a1 b1 c1 direction cosine is a1 by root over a1 square plus b1 square plus c1 square comma a2 by the same thing and 
P2, not A2, B1 by root over A1 square plus B1 square plus C1 square. And finally, C1 by root over A1 square plus B1 square plus C1 square, right? This becomes my direction cosine. So if you use this as L1, M1, N1, and similar term for L2, M2, N2 from here, we will end up getting cos theta is coming out to be the dot product of these two divided by the magnitudes. So A1, A2 plus B1, B2 plus C1, C2 divided by the magnitude of the first one. So A1 square plus B1 square plus C1 square multiplied by A2 square plus B2 square plus C2 square. This will come out to be your direction the angle between the two lines given in terms of the direction ratios. So again, the same results will come for parallel and perpendicular. For perpendicular lines, you should have A1, A2 plus B1, B2 plus C1, C2 is equal to zero. And for parallel lines, you should have A1 by A2 should be equal to B1 by B2 should be equal to C1 by C2. So that is how you find the angle between lines. Right now, the next idea is the idea of projection. So let's think about that for a minute. So the projection of the line segment joining two points a x1 y1 z1 and b x2 y2 z2 on another line on another line whose direction cosines are l m n how to find this projection right so basically what you have here is the line segment joining two points a and b and the points are given by x1 y1 z1 and x2 y2 z2 so let's say let a b distance be equal to r right and you have a third line l here L, L, M, N are the direction cosines of this line, right? What I want is the projection of this segment on this line. So I want this length, right? That is the meaning of the projection of line segment joining two points on another line. If I want this length, technically what I want is A, B cos theta, where theta is this angle. I want mod a b cos theta right so the way to do that would be to do the dot product of this vector with the vector along the line right so if the vector along the line the unit vector along the line can be written as l i cap plus m j cap plus n k cap right because l m n are the direction ratio cosines of this line right so if I do dot product of this unit vector with AB, what I would get is, so AB vector dot product with L unit vector, the lines unit vector, which is basically AB dot product with LI plus MJ plus NK. That should give me mod of AB cos theta because theta is the angle between the AB segment and the line, right? The mod of AB cos theta is my projection. So this will be what? AB vector here is simply x2 minus x1 i plus y2 minus y1 j plus z2 minus z1 k. And the dot product will simply become L times x2 minus x1 plus m times y2 minus y1 plus n times z2 minus z1, right? 
So that is the result that we needed. And what we have found is projection of AB on another line. If the line's direction cosines are given, and the points A and B are given, the projection is simply coming out to be L times X2 minus X1 plus M times Y2 minus Y1 plus N times Z2 minus Z1, right? I hope you understand visually and geometrically what I mean by this, right? Okay. The next point is the symmetrical equation, symmetrical form of the equation of a line. Okay, so the equation of a straight line, equation of a straight line passing through a fixed point A, passing through a fixed point A. And A point is given by X1, Y1, Z1. And having direction cosines. And having direction cosines L, M, N. This equation of a line through a point and in a particular direction will be this. X minus X1 by L is equal to Y minus Y1 by M is equal to Z minus Z1 by N. And that is equal to some R possibly, some constant. This becomes your equation of the line passing through a point and having a particular direction cosine. And it is actually pretty easy to understand because obviously if you take a random point on the line, some point P, X, Y, Z, and A is already a fixed point on the line, X1, Y1, Z1. So because these are two points on the line, the direction ratios should be of the line segment PA should be X minus X1, Y minus Y1, and Z minus Z1. So now when we are writing this equation, we are simply saying that the direction ratio should be proportional to the direction cosine, which is true. So this equation is definitely correct. We are saying x minus x1, y minus y1, z minus z1 is proportional to L, M, N, right? So that becomes your symmetrical form of the equation of a straight line. Another thing to notice here is if A, B, C are the direction ratios of the line, so suppose you are not given direction cosines, you are given direction ratios instead. Then also the equation of the line will be similar. X minus X1 by A, Y minus Y1 by B, and Z minus Z1 by C. Because again, X minus X1, Y minus Y1, and Z minus Z1 are also direction ratios. So they should be proportional to A, B, and C, right? And now, if you, if you need to find to find the general coordinates of a point on this line, the general coordinates or any random point on this line, its coordinates, then we can use this relation by saying that let's say it is equal to some constant t, t is a constant. And we will get x is equal to x1 plus at, y is equal to y1 plus dt, and z is equal to z1 plus ct, right? So basically x1 plus at, y1 plus bt, and z1 plus ct becomes a random point or a general point on this line, right? Similarly, using the ideas that we have seen so far, we can also find the equation of the line joining two points. Suppose two points are given, x1, y1, z1, and b, x2, y2, z2. Earlier, the form of the equation that we were seeing, we were given one point and we were given either the direction cosine or the direction ratios, right? But now if you have two points, 
we can think of A as the fixed point. The line passes through A and we can use B and A together to find the direction ratios of the line. So A, the direction ratios A, B, C for the line of the line will simply be, we have seen this before, it will be X2 minus X1, Y2 minus Y1 and Z2 minus Z1. So the equation of the line will be constructed using these direction ratios. An equation of the line can be written as X minus X1 by X2 minus X1 is equal to Y minus Y1 by Y2 minus Y1 is equal to Z minus Z1 by Z2 minus Z1. Or you could also have used the other point. You could have used point B also. You could say X minus X2 by X2 minus X1 or Y minus Y2 by Y2 minus Y1 and Z minus Z2 by Z2 minus Z1. Both of these represent the same line equation. Basically, it's like in straight lines when you have equation in the form of a point slope form, you are given one point and one slope, but you can also construct an equation in the two point form because two points will also help you calculate the slope and you can use any one of those two points as the point in the two point form, right? So that is what we are talking about here. That's the same idea. It's just the lines are 3D now, but there is no difference between the basic concept, right? Okay. The next thing theoretically is the equation of a plane. Equation of a plane. We have seen this before in the vectors discussion. So we will just do the 3D geometry version of a plane equation, right? So the first thing that you need to know here is a first degree equation. A first degree equation in x, y, z is ax plus by plus cz plus d equal to zero. And this represents a plane in 3D space. Here A, B, C, D are constants. And A and B and C, A, B, C cannot be 0, 0, 0. Because if A, B, C is 0, 0, 0, it doesn't make any sense, right? The equation is gone and becomes D is equal to 0, right? So this is the general equation of a plane. And the general equation of a plane in space is basically a linear first degree equation in three variables x, y, and z, right? Okay. Now, any point in the plane will satisfy this equation, right? You should also know that intersection of two planes will give you a line. Intersection of two planes always gives you a line. It's a line of intersection. When two lines intersect, they intersect in a point. When two planes intersect, they intersect in a line. So you can imagine it like this. Let's say we have a plane here. This is plane one. And let's say you have another plane that is perpendicular to this, or that is at an angle to this plane. This is another plane, right? Notice that when they intersect, they intersect here. And this line lies in both the planes, right? So this is the line of intersection of these two planes, right? Now, the next idea is equation of plane passing through the point, passing through the point, x1, y1, z1. And the equation of the plane like that would be a times x minus x1 plus b times y minus y1 plus c times z minus z1 is equal to 0 where a, b and c are some constants.
Similarly, you can say that equation of the plane can also be found through three non-collinear points. We have done the vector form of this already before. So the idea is pretty simple. If you have three points x1, y1, z1 and x2, y2, z2 and x3, y3, z3. Right? The equation of the plane through first point, plane through first point A would be A times x minus x1 plus B times Y minus Y1 plus C times Z minus Z1 is equal to zero. Now this plane passes through, passes through, if this point is called A, this point is B and this point is C, it passes through B and C, right? So you can put B's coordinates in this. So you'll get one relation A times X2 minus X1 plus B times Y2 minus Y1 plus C times Z2 minus Z1 equals zero. And you'll get another relation if you put C's coordinates. So A times X3 minus X1 plus B times Y3 minus Y1 plus C times Z3 minus Z1 is also equal to zero, right? So now notice that you have three equations. This is one equation, this is another equation, and this is a third equation. And from these three equations, if you eliminate the constants A, B, C, A, B, C are eliminated. You will end up with the equation of the plane through the points, these three points, because x1, y1, z1 will remain and x will remain there in that final equation. So the elimination process could be a little long and annoying, but if you know the points and these are numbers that are known, it might be simple to simply eliminate. However, I will give you the general formula. So if the points A are x1, y1, z1, B is x2, y2, z2, and C is x3, y3, z3, the final equation of the plane passing through these three will come like this x minus x1, y minus y1, z minus z1, x2 minus x1, and x3 minus x1, y2 minus y1, z2 minus z1, this is y3 minus y1, and this is z3 minus z1, and this determinant is equal to zero. This is the condition that will come after eliminating a, b, and c from the three equations that we saw in the previous screen. And this will be the equation of the plane passing through three points in the Cartesian form, right? Now, remember, we have already done the vector form of the plane equation, which was r dot n is equal to d. So you have to go back to those vector forms that we have already discussed. So from there itself, we can understand what is the normal form of a plane, normal form of a plane. So the equation of the plane, equation of the plane, which is at a distance of P from the origin, from the origin, and whose normal and whose normal has the direction cosines L M N will be given by L X plus M Y plus N Z is equal to P. So basically what we are getting is L M N is the direction cosine of the normal to the plane. And the distance of the plane from the origin is P. So in that case, this becomes the equation of the plane. So if you know the perpendicular from the origin to the plane has length P, then we are getting the equation of the plane like this. So the appropriate diagram for this, I can show you. 
So we have a plane like this and origin is somewhere here and the perpendicular from the origin to the plane meets the plane somewhere at M. This has direction cosines of L M N. this line. It is perpendicular to the plane and a random point on the plane is P X Y Z, right? So since this perpendicular has length of P, what we can say is O M is P, O M is P and the direction cosines of O M are L, M and N. So obviously if you think of now this line OP, the projection of OP on OM should have length of P, right? P is equal to projection of OP on OM, right? And OM's lines direction cosines are given. So Projection should be L times X1, X minus 0. Because this point was what? This was X, Y, Z, a random point. So X minus 0 plus M times Y minus 0 plus N times Z minus 0. This is using the concept that we derived earlier that projection of a line segment AB on another line with direction cosines L, M, N should be L times X2 minus X1 plus M times Y2 minus Y1 plus N times Z2 minus Z1. So here A and B are O and P and projection is done on the line OM, right? So we are getting simply LX plus MY plus NZ is equal to P from there. And that becomes your equation of the plane because XYZ was a random point on the plane, any point on that plane, right? So we know now that Lx plus My plus Nz equals P is the equation of the plane in the normal form where P is the distance from the origin to the plane. So Lx plus My plus Nz equals P is the equation of plane in normal form where what is the meaning of this equation that we have derived? L, M, N are direction cosines of normal to the plane. And P is the distance. P is the distance from the origin to the plane. From the origin. To the plane right now if the plane itself passes through the origin one case is if the plane itself passes through origin in that case the distance from origin to the plane would be zero so in that case the equation of the plane would be simply Lx plus My plus Nz is equal to zero, right? Also, if the equation, the general plane equation was given to you, you can convert that into normal form now. Ax plus By plus Cz plus D was zero, suppose. We can say that this can be written like this, Ax plus By plus Cz is equal to minus D. And you can divide both sides by a by root over a square plus b square plus c square x plus b by root over a square plus b square plus c square y plus c by root over a square plus b square plus c square z is equal to minus d by again root over a square plus b square plus c square and this equation now starts looking like your normal form because this, this becomes your L, this becomes your M, this becomes your N. 
and this L M N are basically going to be the direction cosines of the normal to the plane, whereas this will become the distance of the plane from the origin. So looking at a general plane equation, AX plus PY plus CZ plus D equal to zero, you can still convert that to the normal form of the plane equation, right? Lx plus my plus nz is equal to p. And what we realize from here is a by root over summation a square, b by root over summation a square, and c by root over summation a square, these square root terms I'm talking about, these are the direction cosines, direction cosines of the normal to the plane. Right. So if these are the direction cosines of the normal to the plane, obviously the direction ratios of the plane of the normal to the plane can be said to be A, B and C, right? AX plus PY plus CZ plus T equals zero. In this equation, by converting to normal form by doing this a by root over a square x plus b by root over a square y plus c by root over a square z equals to minus d by root over a square. By converting it to a normal form I have realized that the numbers a by root over a square b by root over summation a square plus b square plus c square and c by root over summation a square these are direction cosines of normal to plane right because the equation here is similar to lx plus my plus nz is equal to p and here l m n was direction cosines of the normal to the plane so if I want direction ratios of the normal to the plane, I can say A, B, C, multiply all of these three direction cosines with root over A square plus B square plus C square, which is a constant. And A, B, C becomes the direction ratios of the normal to the plane. And this is a very important idea. There are many questions where you have to understand that given the equation here, you already know the directions of the normal to the plane. The directions of the normal to the plane have numbers A, B, C as the direction ratios. So keep that in mind. There will be problems where you will be needing that, that idea, right? Okay. The next few things are standard results that we can easily prove. I'm not going to do the derivation so much here. Uh, Remember one thing, the because we just now converted the standard plane equation, the standard plane equation we converted into something like this. minus d by root over a square plus b square plus c square. And this is in the lx plus my plus nz is equal to p form. Then obviously p is this, right? So p was perpendicular distance from the origin to the plane, right? If perpendicular distance from the origin to the plane was P, then we have a formula for perpendicular from the origin to the plane now. And that is mod of mod of D by root over A square plus B square plus C square. Mod of D because we need to make the distance always positive. So given the plane equation, perpendicular distance from origin to the plane is this, right? So that is a conclusion from what we have already done. Okay, the next point is perpendicular distance from a point P, X1, Y1, Z1 to the plane 
ax plus by plus cz plus t equals 0. So we already know how to do perpendicular from the origin to the plane. Now we have perpendicular from a random point to a plane. And the derivation of this is really easy. What you have to do is shift your origin to the random point x1, y1, z1. If you shift your origin to x1, y1, z1, the equation of the plane itself will change. So what you are saying is from 0, 0, 0, my new origin will be x1, y1, z1. So if my new origin is this, all the coordinates x will become basically instead of x, you have to write x plus x1, right? x transforms to x plus x1. That's how you will write the new equation. So the new equation will be a x plus x1 plus b y plus y1 plus c z plus z1 plus d equals 0. And this equation can be rewritten as ax plus by plus cz plus cz is equal to minus ax1 minus by1 minus cz1 minus d. And if I divide by root over summation a square every side here, this also has to be divided by that. And now it will start looking like the normal form. And this becomes your perpendicular distance from the origin to the plane. But now our new origin is actually this point, right? So what we are getting is perpendicular distance from the new origin to the plane, which is actually equal to the perpendicular distance from x1, y1, z1 to the plane, right? And from there, we can prove that the formula for this will be mod of ax1 plus by1 plus cz1 plus t divided by root over a square plus b square plus c square. So that is the explanation for how we get this formula. We are shifting the origin to the point x1, y1, z1. And from there, we are finding out the perpendicular distance from the origin to that plane, right? So remember this formula, this is very standard result. Then we have intercept form of plane equation. Intercept form of a plane equation. And basically this is similar to when we did 2D lines. Intercept form of the plane equation will be simply x by a plus y by b plus z by c equals 1. And this plane will pass through the points A0, 0, 0, 0, B0, and 0, 0, C. So this is standard straightforward stuff. So I won't spend too much time on this. Obviously, you can convert AX plus BY plus CZ plus D, the general equation into intercept form by doing AX plus BY plus CZ is equal to minus D and then dividing by minus D. You get X by minus D by A plus y by minus d by b plus z by minus t by c equals 1. So in the standard form here, the intercepts are minus d by a, minus d by b, and minus d by c. These are the x, y, and z intercepts here. Okay, so that is known. Then we have angle between two planes. So let's say that you have two plane equations, a1x, b1y plus c1z plus d1 equals 0. And another plane equation is a2x plus b2y plus c2z plus d2 is equal to 0. So let's say the planes are like this and another plane is like this. Right? So the angle between the planes that we want here is the angle here, this angle, theta, right? You should realize that <clears throat> this angle, angle between two planes will be the same as the angle between the normals to these planes, the normals to these planes. Because the normal to plane 1 is like this and normal to plane 2 is something like this. 
So this is normal two and this is normal one. So this angle is also going to be theta, right? Because this was N1 was perpendicular to this plane and N2 is perpendicular to this plane. You should realize that the angle between the normals is the same as the angle between the planes, right? And because we know this, we already know that A1, B1, C1 and A2, B2, C2 are direction ratios of the normals. We understood that earlier in the class that direction ratios of the normal to the plane are these three numbers, right? And because now we know that we can say the angle between two planes can be taken by doing the dot product of these two direction ratios. So finally, our formula comes out that if theta is the angle between two planes, cos theta would be simply A1, A2 plus B1, B2 plus C1, C2 by root over a1 square plus b1 square plus c1 square multiplied by root over a2 square plus b2 square plus c2 square. Why are we getting this? Because the two lines which are normal to the respective planes have direction ratios a1, b1, c1 and a2, b2, c2. And we have seen that if you have two lines with given direction ratios, the angle between those two lines is coming by this formula, right? So from here, we can also conclude that the planes are perpendicular if A1, A2 plus B1, B2 plus C1, C2 is zero and planes are parallel if a1 by A2 is equal to B1 by B2 is equal to C1 by C2. So these are things that we already have thought of earlier. When two lines are parallel, those conditions we have already seen earlier. If the two planes are perpendicular to each other, then they are known as orthogonal planes. So that is just a terminology. Remember that orthogonal planes are planes that are perpendicular to each other, right? If planes are parallel to each other, the condition is A1 by A2 is equal to B1 by B2 is equal to C1 by C2. We also have one, one important result, distance between two parallel planes. So let's say the plane equations are AX plus BY plus CZ e plus D1 equals zero and AX plus BY plus CZ plus D2 equals zero. Here I'm taking the direction ratios of the two normals as the same because basically if the two planes are parallel, there will be only one common normal, right? You don't even need to write A1, A2 and B1, B2 normal. Why? Because the same normal will be normal to both the planes, right? So that's why I'm putting ABC as the direction ratios of the normal. It is the common normal to the two planes, right? And in that case, the distance between the two parallel planes will become mod of D2 minus D1 by root over A square plus B square plus C square. This is similar to the distance between two parallel straight lines in 2D geometry, right? Okay, now we don't have much more theory. What I will do is I will stop at this point. There is a little bit of theory about family of planes and stuff, but I want to discuss it in the next class. So we have discussed in today's class, the basics of your 3D geometry. We have seen the equations of lines, we have seen direction cosines, direction ratios. And finally, we saw also the basic theory of general equations of planes, right? So that's about it for today. In the next class, I'll finish the theory and then we'll do some problems on the 3D geometry to try to consolidate everything that we have done so far. So that's it for this video. I'll see you next time.